out of that breaking news out of New York City involving Jeffrey Epstein. I want to bring back in NBC's Stephanie Gosk, who is outside federal court. So, Stephanie, we already know that Epstein is inside facing a judge who will decide whether or not he gets bail. That decision won't come down until Thursday, but there have been some other updates, right? Yeah, there certainly have. Now, I'm going to take you back to the Saturday that Jeffrey Epstein was arrested. You may remember that that Saturday, the FBI searched his $77 million mansion here in New York City. Now, we already knew that they found a safe in that mansion, and they opened it up and found hundreds, if not thousands, of photos of what they describe as seemingly underage women. They also told the court today that inside that safe, they found cash, they found diamonds, and they found an expired 1980s passport with Jeffrey Epstein's photo but under a different name and in their description to the judge they said it was issued by a foreign country with an address for Jeffrey Epstein in Saudi Arabia and the judge said to the prosecutor what do you have tell us more about this passport that was all they said they did not say what country the passport was issued from but specifically did mention that he had an address a residence in Saudi Arabia obviously Obviously, that raises a bunch of questions. They went on to talk about how his dangerousness is not only the fact that he has the ability to, to you know, risk a flight that he would leave, but also that he is, a, he is a danger to the community. They are citing specifically his alleged tampering with witnesses. We are also now hearing from his defense team for the first time, and not surprisingly, they are arguing that that non-prosecution agreement that we've been talking so much about that was signed over a decade to go would also include these charges that he's now facing and they are going to likely argue that they should be thrown out. Hallie? Steph, this is certainly um, a, a new and rather remarkable piece of information now that we're getting out from these prosecutors. Just walk us through one more time on this passport issue because I want to be sure that we're real clear about it. This was an old passport that had Epstein's face on it but under a different name according to prosecutors, right? It, it, that's right. And again, it, it's a very old passport from the 1980s. It's expired. They did not reveal what country issued the passport. They said that it is a photo of Jeffrey Epstein, but a different name, and that it shows his residence as Saudi Arabia. They didn't go any further to say what the significance of that was. It was just kind of put in there. Um, the judge obviously intrigued and it raised some questions. Those questions don't seem to have been answered in, in this in this hearing. So I think it has a lot of people scratching their heads. I have to tell you, I've been covering this since that incredible yeah. explosive article in the Miami Herald last year. I've never heard Saudi Arabia come up in the conversation. We've heard about the Virgin Islands, a ranch in New Mexico, but Saudi Arabia is a new one for me, that's for sure. Wow, Stephanie Gosk, uh, outside the federal courthouse. Where Steph, this is still going on, right? So we're going to get updates with you and from you throughout the morning, I bet. Yeah, absolutely. Jeffrey Epstein will have to wait until Thursday to find out whether he's released on bail or remains behind bars. That's what a federal judge in New York said today during a hearing on bail conditions. Epstein has pleaded not guilty to charges of sex trafficking minors. Tom Hansen has the details from Lower Manhattan. A federal judge said Monday he has not decided if wealthy financier Jeffrey Epstein deserves bail. Epstein is accused of recruiting and abusing dozens of underage girls in his $77 million New York mansion and his Florida home in the early 2000s. According to the indictment unsealed last week, in order to maintain and increase his supply of victims, Epstein also paid victims to recruit additional girls. The girls were recruited in a variety of ways, usually by employees of Epstein, and sometimes by fellow victims. On Friday, prosecutors told the judge several more alleged victims had recently come forward, and they say Epstein may have tried to influence witnesses who might have information against him. For those reasons, prosecutors considered Epstein dangerous and a flight risk, but his lawyers argued he should be able to await trial at his Manhattan mansion with electronic monitoring. Epstein's lawyers say he hasn't committed crimes since pleading guilty to charges of soliciting a minor for prostitution in Florida in 2008. The judge is expected to make his decision Thursday. Tom Hanson, CBS News, New York. And CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman joins me now. So, Ricky, what did we learn this morning about what might be causing the judge to take his or her time in sentencing uh, 
Mr. Um, Epstein's bail. Well, one of the things the judge has to consider is, is this a case that is appropriate for detention? That is a severe sanction on someone who is going to have to prepare for trial with his lawyers for a very long time. So was there anything new in addition to all of the filings, which ended with a 5 p.m. filing last Friday, that was very explosive on the part of the prosecution? Today in court, two things happened that I thought were really surprising. Number one was that we found out that Jeffrey Epstein had an old expired passport going all the way back to the 1980s that showed Mr. Epstein with a different name and listing his residence as Saudi Arabia. So he had a fake passport, essentially. Yes, that's really down to it. Okay, yeah, that's, that'll definitely give a judge pause. Well, even if it's all the way back to the 1980s, which of course will be the defense argument, if you can have an argument about ever having an expired face passport. Um, the second thing that happened was that you had two uh, alleged victims who spoke with the judge today from the podium about what they believe has been done to them. And one of the things that the defense argued Argues extensively is that the defense says, look, this is not sex trafficking. This is a simple solicitation for prostitution case, just like the case was back in Florida in 2008. And what the sex trafficking argument will eventually be about in a motion to dismiss is that the Epstein lawyers are saying, I'm not trafficking in women. I'm just having a woman come to my house where I live. I'm not give, getting women for commercial purposes to other people where I'm procuring them, soliciting them, and, and then crossing, selling and them. And crossing state lines. Or having a phone call across state lines or whatever may happen mm -hmm. to bring in interstate commerce. But the difficulty with that argument is when these two women talk to the judge today, you can clearly see that their explanation is they were, in essence, trafficked. It doesn't mean that someone has to tie you up and throw you in the back of a car or an airplane. It means that you can be coerced as a child to be going with someone to another place, as you would say, across state lines. Finally, the question about his finances remains murkier than ever. The defense submitted an affidavit that still has not been made public about what his finances are. The prosecution argues that his finances are far greater. And of course, when you have far greater finances, you have more of a reason to flee and the ability to flee. And what were some of the things the defense offered? They said he would stay in his $77 million mansion. What were some of the other elements that they offered the judge? Well, they offered the judge, which on paper looks like a very long laundry list of conditions that appear to be onerous until you go underneath them, which the prosecution did in their 5 p.m. Friday on 5 p.m. filing on Friday. What they are is he stays in the mansion. Um, he wears a GPS device or he has some GPS latest technology tracking. Um, he gives up the mansion and his plane as collateral for a bond. Um, he will ground the plane so it cannot be flown. Um, he will waive any objection to extradition should he flee, which of course <laughs> is unenforceable. And my favorite, that he will hire security guards who will then surround what the prosecution calls the guilt cage, the $77 million mansion.